what's new at Universal Studios Florida. Hey, what's going on everybody? Rick and Nikki here. Hello. And we're gonna give you some Universal Studios updates today. Here at the South Entrance Pavilion, they have started to add and they've made good headway on the roofing tile. Near the front entrance of the park, Studio Suites, the fire hydrant has a bit of a leak. Near the front of the park by the Today Cafe, there's restrooms, but there are construction walls around them, so the restrooms are closed here. Your next closest restrooms will be by the exit of the park and by Mel's Drive-In. And I guess probably the ones by Jimmy Fallon too. Here on Illumination Avenue, Villain Con, it has not opened. It did not open by the 4th of July weekend as I had hoped. I hear they're having multiple issues with this ride, one of which is the blasters. The blasters are like really heavy, especially for kids. Not sure how they're gonna fix that. So I guess we're gonna move our estimated opening to late summer. And over here at the Minion Land entrance, they've added back the please do not climb signs. Over here at the Five and Dime on Hollywood Boulevard, there is a water fountain. I never see anyone using this, but it does work. Mel's Drive-In, which is temporarily closed. They've blackened out the windows and they have removed some of the neon signage. We do not anticipate this being closed for long, but we do hope it's ready for Halloween Horror Nights when it becomes Mel's Die-In. I have not run across it recently, but I'm going to assume that the cute little dance show they do here by Mel's Drive-In is still occurring. Like I said, I haven't seen them do it, but I think it is, and I really, really like that show. It's a really, as far as like street shows here, that one's my favorite. And at the end of Hollywood Boulevard, this street sign, which comes and goes, is back. Now it's a go. Oh my God, it's 11.17 and no one is in line for crepes? That's insane. King Julian going back for a break. Also back here, uh, this water fountain is back on and running again. That's nice, it had been turned off for a while. I really only came back here to show you the fountain and then King Julian started waving at me so I felt like I had to show him. King Julian is a friendly <laughs> He's just a happy little guy over there. Yeah, he just got done with his meet and greet, so he's going back to cool off in a break room. <laughs> the other day when I was doing an update video for Islands of Adventure, I was at Poseidon. And I said, well, maybe something new will come in to Poseidon in 2024 because nothing else was on the docket new for 2024. I misspoke. I forgot about the kids zone here at Universal Studios Florida. This should reopen in 2024. And thank you to everyone who reminded Rick about that fact. I wasn't here to help him, you know, remember that, yes, yeah. the kids zone's coming in. Thanks for being my pepper pots in Nikki's absence. Yes, thank you. It takes the village. As we stroll through Springfield, the walking around crowd doesn't seem too bad this 4th of July weekend. But the thing is, like, locals, like Floridians, 4th of July weekend, so much to do outside, barbecues by the pool, you got beaches, you got springs, snorkeling, lakes. So, theme park's not high on the list for locals during the holiday. The construction walls here in Springfield have been here so long, it's gonna be big news when they take these down. Let's show you some merchandise inside the MIB gear shop. They have like a lot of anime and superhero stuff in here. And good AC. <laughs> Here's an MHA t-shirt for $28. Another MHA t-shirt, also $28. Uh, material, kind of thin. Feels like a thin material to me. But it's soft. And these little buggers are $18 a piece. Two more t-shirts. Again, $28 for these. Both kind of a thin material, but like Nikki said, soft. Demon Slayer. This is a long sleeve black t-shirt for $35.
a Demon Slayer sippy cup. A little water cup here is $25. There's both sides of the cup right there. Behind glass, we have some cool little figurines. The ones you're looking at right now are $30. These are also $30. These two here though, 50 bucks. As well as, let's move on down the road here, slide on down. The ones on your screen now are also $50. I haven't seen this before, but this looks cool. This is the back of the t-shirt that's $28. I'll flip it around, show you the front real fast. But obviously the back with the better graphic. They also have the hat. Here's the hat. It is $26 for the hat. Get the hat, get the t-shirt, you're looking cool. Another cool t-shirt I haven't seen here yet. Also $28, check that out. That is the front graphic, by the way, the front side. And then over here, the hoodie. I didn't price check the hoodie. Let me grab one real fast. $55 for this. I have not seen this either. And here is another $28 t-shirt. Again, this graphic's on the front. Kind of gray. A little thicker than the other ones. Slightly thicker than the other t-shirts I've shown you. Here's something else I haven't seen. A Dragon Ball Z radar cushion with sound for $50. Nikki's trying to figure out how to make the sound right now. She figured it out. Press the red button. I don't know if you heard it. It goes beep, 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 beep. And for $60, a Demon Slayer mini backpack. I'm going to suggest to Nikki right now, she should perhaps consider doing some anime keychains or bag accessories. She could design something very nice for this bag on her Etsy shop. Link in the description box. She's not wearing an anime backpack now, but she has a minion one. And this is an example of the bag accessory she made for this to match this bag. But I'm sure she can do one for anime bags too. And they're not just bag accessories. They're keychains. And then I also have some lanyards and some pens coming out with some cool vinyl stickers soon. So check it out. And let's see, July 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. Mm -hmm. She's having a 10% off sale. That's right. So you should be watching this, what, on the 3rd for the first time. So if you're watching this on July 3rd or 4th, take advantage of that 10% discount. Exactly. And it's the promo code July 4 with like the number 4. Yep. Since we are in the MIB gear shop, there is a section, a whole section for MIB merchandise. Over here by the old Fear Factor Stadium, this bench. One of my favorite benches because it's always in the shade. It's over here by Fear Factor Stadium and kind of the, the old Jaws restrooms. But pretty much in the shade all the time. It's awesome. Over here by, let's just call it the underground. Walk through the brick walls to get to Diagon Alley. Let's see if we have any updates in there. Inside of Sugar Plums for the Chocolate Frogs. This is the new collectible wizard card. And if you really like chocolate frogs, you can get a purse in here too. All about the chocolate frog for $70. On the Carcat Market stage right now, the Tales of Beetle the Bard. Cheated because travelers usually drown in the river, but then he was coming. He pretended to congratulate the three brothers upon their magic and said that each should earn a prize for having been clever enough to evade him. The oldest brother, who was a combative man, asked for a wand more powerful than any in existence. A wand that must always win duels for its own. So death fashioned him one from an elder tree that we never on this Sunday afternoon, 12.05 p.m., the current wait time for Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts is 50 minutes. Here in San Francisco, they have removed the construction walls that were right there. They're gone now. Looks like they were doing some underground work. Recently, someone asked me in a live stream, does Universal have nightly fireworks? No, they do not. They do not have currently 
they do not have a end of day show or end of night show there used to be one here a fountain show but it has gone away something new will replace it we just don't know what or when because of its location i hardly ever report on transformers but i will today it's a 45 minute wait Ah heck since we're standing right here, let's check out the film vault. Home to classic Universal movies such as Back to the Future and Jaws. It's also home to merchandise of some classic NBC television shows such as Friends and The Office. I just got done re-watching The Office. Saw the last episode yesterday. Now I'm in the mood for some Office merch. Another classic TV show, I Love Lucy. Nikki found this shirt for $33 and she really wants it. Why, Nikki? Because it's super soft. Like, literally, I would wear this around the house all the time. It's that soft, it huh? It is that soft. Mm, 33 bucks, you can have it. Down by the alley next to Louie's. Let me zoom in. Do -do 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 -do. The wall there, that facade, still needs to be replaced. At Finnegan's, they have updated the outside menu. This is the new menu now. View it from the outside before you go in. One of my new favorites right there, the shrimp box tea. The bench by the fire station has been removed. Also, there used to be a bench right here, and Universal has removed that as well. Across from Papa Nana, this little food and beverage building, the construction walls have been removed. They've added the Coke Freestyle machines over here. But the question remains, do they still have the frozen Jack and Coke? And the answer is no. They took out the machine. No more frozen Jack and Coke. Long summer. Time for a lunch break. And today's lunch will be inside of the Minion Cafe. And for $20, here is my entree, Lucy's Top Secret Salmon, Wood Grilled Atlantic Salmon, Coconut Blue Rice, Thai Cucumbers, Edamame, and a Lipstick Taser Sauce. And this is Kevin's Chapa Chapa Salad. It's purple cabbage and arugula, tomatoes, cucumber, edamame, crispy pork belly, pulled rotisserie chicken, green banana chips, and a mustard ale vinaigrette, all for $15.99. And Nikki brought the perfect bag for our lunch today. All done with lunch. Let's do, I don't know, let's call it a quick food review. <laughs> Ladies first. All right, me first. Um, of all the things I've had so far, this has been my least favorite. Okay. Um, just, you know, I didn't realize that, you know, there's going to be so much pork belly in there. Pork belly. Um, yeah, so I had to kind of pick around. Um, okay. The dressing was nice. It was nicely dressed though, to be on the positive side. She shared a few bites with me. Right. I enjoyed exactly. like the dressing and like the little lettuce, what, arugula and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. I, I liked all of it, but go ahead. Yeah, well, I mean, it was really fresh. I just had to pick around a few things, yeah. but um, no, I mean, like in general, it was pretty good. I mean, okay. I did like yours though. Like I, okay. yours was the hero of the two, I would I think. had the salmon and I love salmon. Yeah. Now, when I pick salmon for myself, it's more savory. That was a nice change for me because it was a sweet. A sweet flavored salmon. Right, and it, yours had like a little bit of an Asian has, flair yeah, maybe to yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yes. the pickled right cucumber had this spice on it that was like, woo, it had some heat. Oh my right. gosh, like my eyes were watering. But I loved it though. It yeah. was so good. The coconut rice, and you've had the coconut rice in other dishes. Yes, that's a favorite. It's phenomenal. So good. I was surprised with my little beans. What are they? The edamame. Yeah, because they're they're served cold, I guess. Yes. Yeah. That, that took me off guard. <laughs> but they were still pretty good. But the salmon, the hero of the, you know what? The, the salmon and the coconut rice. Okay. Well, but and then the little skewer, like like the my little cheap, my little ray gun. Yeah, your little ray gun thing. You squeeze that had, in like, the sauce. More of a, yeah, like a a sweet sauce yes. to it. So yeah. then you've got the pickled cucumber that had the heat and the spice, and then you had you know the sweet glaze on your right. salmon was a good pairing, I thought. Yes. So overall, good dish. I like it. Yeah, yours was yours was great. And for twenty bucks, and it was filling, but you don't walk away like stuffed. Right. But you don't walk away hung, uh, hungry either. So. Yeah. So it's a win. Good stuff. We have tried all the desserts at the Minions Cafe, but we haven't tried all the treats from Bake My Day, so let's get our little dessert here. 
And look what we have here. Thanks for chomping by, little shark cupcake. I think after my pass holder discount, it came to like $7.24, somewhere around there after my discount. But this is a red velvet cake with cream cheese icing. And that cupcake is pretty much what you would expect from a red velvet cake. Uh, red velvet, that chocolatey kind of cake. Yep, the and icing was that, what, cream cheese icing? Yep. It was really good. Just what you expect for red velvet. Now the shark though, that was a solid piece of white chocolate. Yes it was, we tried it like, several times to slow <laughs> right through that thing and it, it was solid. <laughs> now, can I go back to the Minions Cafe for a moment? Okay. I want to say something. Okay. Um, I think it's an upgrade over the Monsters Cafe. That's saying something. Which a lot of people, including myself, love the Monsters Cafe, the theming inside. Yeah. But it was kind of dark, whereas the Minions Cafe is kind of a light, bright, happy place. Yeah. Uh, I think the Monsters Cafe will go better, like in its own land over there at Epic. Oh, for sure. I'm excited to see it come back. I'm hoping, right? Yeah, maybe a little out of place on the main strip there. Yeah. But inside its own land, it'll work. And that's what's happening at Universal Studios Florida. If you want to know what's happening at the Disney parks, there's a video above Nikki's head. Probably a Magic Kingdom video. <laughs> Don't miss the magic. Don't miss the fun. Click it.